Alrighty, today we are YouTubing because I haven't YouTubed in like three weeks. I've been out of town, so I haven't had a chance to YouTube. I've been shooting, I've been filming, I've been photographing, I've been doing all kinds of things except YouTubing. I'm going to say YouTube a lot in this video, YouTube. Uh, but it's hard to be a YouTuber. Did you know that? You make a ton of videos for very little views unless you get kind of in that like zone or that luck streak or whatever the algorithm says, hey, I like you. It just hits you off. I haven't hit off yet. We're hoping to hit off. Anyways, YouTube. So <laughs> I'm so tired, guys. Today, I'm going to show you how to call your photos. Now, no, I'm not showing you every the same old, same old calling photos. I mean the steps to call your photos to speed up your editing process. Now, for, for lack of a better explanation, I think it's just better if I show you. So let's get into it, shall we? YouTube. My name is Will, welcome back to the channel. If you are a returning viewer slash subscriber, welcome, love you, it's good to see you again. If you are new, welcome, love you, it's good to see you for the first time. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure you hit the like button because it does help me out a little bit. Um, so what I was saying was calling photos is a very simple process. There's not much to it. It's, you know, click, move, click, move, click, move, star, blah, blah, blah. However, with Lightroom's newer updates with the masking and all of that, there is a faster way, even if it does seem a little counterintuitive, it actually is faster to separate certain parts of your calling procedure and add a step in your call. Let's say you just finished a photo shoot and now you want to go through and call it, pick your selects. So the average person normally calls it by using stars or flags. Now to summarize that super quick, if you press one on the keyboard, you get one star, two, two star, three, three star, up to five stars. If you press P on the keyboard, you can flag it. If you press U on the keyboard, you can remove the flag. And if you press X on the keyboard, you can reject it. So there's tons of different ways to um, call your photos. Now for me, I simply use the one star method. I go through all the photos, one star for the selects, no stars for uh, the non-selects. And then I just sort by clicking down here on the one star and that will sort by stars. I haven't done it obviously yet, so it's not gonna show. However, just as a quick little note, there is a trick button that allows you to jump ahead a photo once you've selected it and it makes things a little bit faster. For example, if you press one on one star, then you have to use the arrow keys to move to the next photo. However, if you, let's go back to that photo, press zero to unrate it. If you turn on caps lock and then press one, it will jump forward as soon as you've rated it. So now I've rated that one. So I press zero, one, zero, one, one, so on, so forth. It allows you to jump forward as soon as you star or rate your image. Now to stop that from happening, turn caps lock off and it stops doing it. So the whole point of this video is none of that. <laughs> YouTube. That's just a summary of how to do your quick selects. The whole point of this video is to teach you how to edit a little bit faster. Now, how I mean is usually you call all your photos, you go through, then you sort, then you go through and you edit and you do your remove tools and you do all of that. There is a faster way. If you move your cropping and remove tools to the calling section, do all of that at the same time. So if you star the photo, if you say, this is this is one of my selects, crop and do the removals, then move on to the next photo. Don't do any color edits or anything other than that. You star it, you crop it to how you want it, and you do your remove tools. You do that through all of your selects, then you go back through and color edit. The reason for this is because when you do your color edit and your masks and all of that, prior to doing your remove tool, you then have to update your AI masks, which it seems like it makes sense to do it in that order, but in actual fact, it slows you down in your editing procedure. So let me show you just from this standpoint of what I'm going to do. So we'll start here, just as a really, really fast note. If you haven't already, hit the like button and subscribe because you don't want to miss a video and it really helps me YouTube harder. The other thing is, as a YouTuber, you know, I make millions and millions of dollars from YouTube ads. Not. 
<laughs> YouTube. So to help me keep making all of these awesome videos for free for you, I came out and put together an incredible, very, very extensive Lightroom editing course. I mean, this literally covers everything I know about editing in Lightroom, including a lot of extras that are pretty freaking cool. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you about them now, but I will link it in the description. Go check it out. So first, I like this image, so we'll press one as we already have it. Press R on the keyboard and we're gonna crop it to the horizon. Now, there's nothing particularly here that I would remove, so we'll go on to the next photo. Now, this is about the same, but we're gonna go ahead and select this photo as well. It's a little bit broader. Now, the crop is seems to be good, but we have some people over here. So we'll press Q on the keyboard. We're not gonna use generative AI because this will do just a good enough job to remove this. We don't need the generative AI. Good, so we got that one. Do this one, this is zero because it's the same, zero, it's the same. Uh, I like this one because he's actually looking a different direction. So I'll press R on the keyboard. We're gonna center them and crop it, right? Zoom in here. Now for this, we are gonna need to use generative AI simply because we want her hairline not to get messed up. Now I have found when you zoom in, sometimes generative AI takes a little bit to catch up. So if that happens, simply just press and click and let it load and then it should work totally fine. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom in here. I'll, on another photo, I'll kind of show you what I mean, mean on that. But I found little tips and tricks for my computer. Maybe it's just my computer is a little bit slower for this, but for my computer, it seems to work pretty, pretty good. Now, if we zoom in here, this did a terrible, what the, that is so weird. I don't know why it does that. So click and then do this. It like for some reason thought it was two removal selections and so it didn't remove half of it and did a terrible job. There we go. Good, all right, so one, go to this one. This is the same thing. We don't need this one. Don't need that one, don't need that one. Good, that's all the same. Here's a different photo. Good, looking at each other. I'm gonna star this one. I'm gonna do this, the remove tool here and remove. And then we're gonna crop it. So R on the keyboard, get it cropped right. Uh, move to the next one. Don't need it, don't need it. Beautiful, this one's super cute. Good, we like that one. So rate that one, press R on the keyboard to crop it. I'm gonna crop it right. Good, and then we're going to, let's try the people distractions here. Distraction removals, people, let's see if this works really well. It should pick up these guys and these guys over here. I still haven't decided if distraction removal is faster or if the, uh, generative AI, me just doing it manually is faster. Honestly, I'm very, very fast at this, so I think I'm faster. I, so far, I have been faster than AI. Seems like a weird statement, but I have. Uh, this is taking forever and it didn't actually do any of it. So we're just gonna remove that generative AI. We're going to do that, bang, 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 boom, done. Let that do its thing. But you see how doing this method seems longer, but in actual fact, it makes your calling process a little bit longer. But then when you go back to edit, it's so much faster because you've already cropped, you've already done all of your removals. All you're doing is applying your edits and then moving on. So if you have a lot of photos that are the same, then you just simply sync the edits. And since you've already done all the removals and the cropping and stuff, once you've done that edit and they're all the same, it, you're done. So it's such a faster way to edit and I guarantee once you do it this way a few times and figure out the tweaks and all of that, you'll be like, holy crap, Will is a freaking genius YouTube. And thank you for adding hours of my life back from editing because I just gave you hours of your life back from editing because this, honestly, winning. So that is it. So that is the procedure. Now, let's say we went through all of the photos. Now we're gonna sort the stars. We're gonna click the stars and I'm gonna make sure that this says uh, rating is greater to than or equal to. The only time I change this is let's say I did a wedding and I starred all the selects one, I starred the sneak peeks two, and maybe I did a special photo montage or something like that. I'll star those three. And then in that case, I'll go to rating is equal to, but then nine out of 10 times, I just come back to this one. So now we have our photos. So now we would just apply our edit. So let's go ahead and apply one of my presets here. Um, these are not out yet, but they are so freaking epic. And this is just giving you kind of a little sneak peek of them. I absolutely 
am loving these presets. They have work, they work on like 90% of all photos, almost literally a one click edit. It's freaking stupid. Anyways, so I'm gonna tweak this one just a little bit, but overall, I think it looks pretty good. I would come back and do some adjustments here, but uh, to keep this video relatively short, since I've already gone over the point of this video, we're done there. So then we're gonna press shift and sync and boom, good. But cropping, done, removal, done, everything done. All I'm doing is syncing my edit and bada bing, bada boom, there we're done. Now this seems very fast because obviously I'm only doing seven photos, but if you add the time saved per photo, it is incredible. Boom, that one needs more. Oh, there we go. I was gonna say a little bit of a delay there. Come on, come on computer. You're killing me. You're making me look slower than I am. Anyways, I would tweak all of those photos a little bit, but you get the idea. This is a super quick and fast method that will give you a lot of time back. But that wraps up this freaking sweet video. You're welcome. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Help me YouTube harder because I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Probably won't make it, especially won't make it without your help. But with your help, we might make it. So make sure you like, share, blah, blah, blah. Do all the things that help with engagement. Here's a couple of videos that you might enjoy. Go take a look at them. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. YouTube.